Just before you came in this morning, we were really, really worried. I still want to go back to that New Year uh, Eve Mass because it would be a shame on us as a nation for us to note that some churches are not going to hold that Mass. It means to some that the evil people are already in charge. What can we do as a nation now? What is the government going to do, especially around those churches in Madeline, some other places we know that these bad guys could target? Some of those equipment that have been bought by the government can't they be deployed to comb this area so that people can now say, okay, now we can leave our, our cars in this distance because this other perimeter around the churches have been combed and it's safe for us to worship so that this tradition of being in the church and getting into the new year can't be broken? Definitely, what the situation calls, as I say, is not panic. It's measures that will restore public confidence, that will restore citizens' confidence. Some of the measures are by government security agencies to increase the work we're doing now and improve on it. The second one is citizenship action. You know, for example, now we're here, we are in the past, we didn't know anybody who come to a church or a mosque or a community and kill us. Now we have killers in our midst. That's what the first message to Nigeria. There are killers in our midst, killers for fun, evil people that are ready to kill themselves and kill other people. You know, the Holy Book said the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? You know, human beings are so nice, but they can be worse than beasts. Even lions don't kill unless they want to eat. But men can kill for fun. This is what we are in now. So what we need is to know that we are living in a new phase now. Every church should liaise with the police in their own environment. Also, we at communities should invest in said local governments, state governments can buy some of this equipment because it's not all about federal government. The federal government will liaise, but we can buy and distribute some of those equipment to churches. Some churches are also in the position to buy their own. I'm really happy you're yes. saying this. Sorry, yeah. uh, you're continuing. Because it, it brings us to the security vote. If they give security votes to some of the state governments, yeah. it then means that some of the local governments can also benefit and do what you just said. The equipment aren't very costly. It's simply the awareness that we're in a difficult situation. Even some churches and mosques can buy their own equipment. They are not such expensive equipment. So the idea is... We will not need screening, especially in all churches that are in semi-urban areas, you know, and so on, where terror can easily hide, and they will need some equipment, you know, some screening, and parking spaces, deploying security. Even, you know, citizens training at that level can operate some of the equipment. They are not so difficult. We've seen them in many hotels now. So we need them in all major churches, for example, so that there will be some screening before cars parked in. Yeah, good thing. We will also, we need, we will also, also. We need special parking spaces. Like that are guarded with entrance so that at the entrance before you come and park your car there is a screening for every vehicle that comes in so these are the things that are coming but you know as i've said we've entered a new phase so we must also understand that our people are resilient people are taking measures at different levels also that i've seen i've gone to a place and i've seen new thinking i've seen new equipment i've seen new measures so the idea is for us to do more but i believe state government local governments and federal government, we can all do our best by making sure we now secure most worshipping places, you know, in the country, so that if we know that there are lines of attack, yeah. we it, do that. And it, and and, and it's, it's, it's ongoing. I know. It's ongoing. Mr. Minister, you know, initially you said something. I, I still want to go back to this issue of state police. You said that we tried it in the 60s and it did not work because, you know, uh, states did not use it properly as they should have used it. And this time around, we're faced with new security threats. You did mention that amongst communities, people know the witches. They know the thieves amongst them. You don't think that if we had people who lived, policemen who did not live in barracks, who lived among the communities, intelligence work would be enhanced. But let me tell you something. What you need at state and local government levels. It decentralized responsibility for security. It doesn't have to be with state police. I've made a point here. If I were a state governor today, under the present situation, I would call my community leaders together, segment them, village by village, hamlet by hamlet, chiefdom by chiefdom, community by community, and say, look, you, A, B, C, D, you are responsible for any stranger coming into your place, we must have the report. You traditional rulers and your communities, you must have regular meetings to detect the movement of strangers and including your sons and daughters that you do not understand. Give them, give me your, their all calls. It is possible to do this. You don't need a state police to do it. 
the police, as we presently have, are located in all in most hamlets. What police stations in all those places? And police commissioners in states respond, and they are responsible to their state governors. So we are worried about the maturity level because, as I've told you, Boko Haram is an outgrowth of a political group that was set up to fight for an election. Do you now, think? excuse me. Do you think that if you now okay, give, um, if you give such such a person a responsibility now to set up even a police that he owns? What to be the consequence? All right, we'll so we are worried. The headlines. We are not ruling it for all the future, but we believe in future it may be the right okay. now. We are worried. Okay, assuming they had they had been made into a legitimate force like the police force, a police force in the state, do you think you could ever have grown into I, I, I don't becoming know why, a terrorist? I don't know why we keep thinking that the problem is because there is no state security. No, no, no I'm just asking. Is, is it is it possible that assuming they were a legitimate force, for instance, the militants in the Niger Delta, you said they used to be thugs. Assuming they were legitimate legitimate uh, a legitimate police force could they have ever have had the luxury of becoming a militant group let me tell you the president will ask this question in in, in, in when we went to a lot to meet with the interreligious affairs council he said look we are having we are studying the maturity of our political systems you, you, you have to do things in line with what you think will work not just for the sake of it nigeria is a young federation we're young democracy and attitudes have not grown to reach a level where you can trust certain levels of society with, with power at that level. So we have, we have to be a bit careful. And that, so we, we have had experiences in this country, and those experiences are guiding us. You look at local government elections that have been held. In every state, it is 100% for the party in power. No party wins a single seat. Once it is PDP or AMPP or ACN, or action congress, hundred percent victory for the party in power. Do you want to trust that if they have legitimate security in addition to the talks that are marauding the streets, that it will be better? So we want to see where we will go first. So the present federal police, which is made up of citizens from all over the country, is united, is a strong force. It does not come from the tribe, maybe in some multi ethnic group. You know, a local government chairman or governor may just go to his tribe and make all of their members his police. See, there are problems, please. Okay. Let's not just watch into things in that of, we don't um, fully understand. Legislation now, uh, mm -hmm. because I mean, the world is a global village. Countries that are faced with this kind of action would seem to compare how they responded with a view to learning, what is it that we can improve on, that we're doing. And then we'll talk about legislation. When uh, September 11 happened, the U.S. came up with what they called the U.S. Patriot Act. And so that act means that they can also intercept, they could go in, they could hold uh, suspects, as it were. What are we doing about our laws? Those who are caught, what kind of laws uh, is being made to ensure that terrorists well, are punished, uh, uh, not uh, just for uh, three years? I believe within our present laws, you know, the criminal code, uh, for example, in, in, in northern Nigeria, the penal code in northern Nigeria, um, and, and other federal laws, we have sufficient provisions to deal with criminals. Um, the idea is to in, 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 enhance our intelligence capacity to apprehend and arrest them and put them on trial. Um, so, you remember in the United States there was also a backlash, you know, um, people also didn't like some of the laws that came on board because of citizenship rights and freedoms. And that is why America formed Guantanamo Bay in, 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 uh, in Cuba, where it has no uh, constitutional, uh, where its constitution does not operate, where its law do not operate to handle some of those criminals uh, that they arrested internationally because they could not have been tried under the laws of the United States. So, there is a level where we can go and we we'll use the presence of terror to harm citizens' rights, and that can also backlash. But I think we have sufficient laws on ground now uh, to deal with anybody uh, who is found to be a terrorist, or a criminal, or an armed robber, or a kidnapper. So the idea is to enforce the existing laws we have, uh, not necessarily to create new ones. And then for citizens, wherever they are, yeah. whatever you can do at this moment, to help the security situation in your family, in your community, in your church, in your mosque, you know, in your state, do it. You, you know, know, so do it. Whatever legitimate thing that you can do that is that is lawful, in uh, particularly in partnership and cooperation, do it. I think I, we're I, making I, headway let me, here. Let me give one example. Even with all the crisis in Georgia, there are communities that didn't join. Christians and Muslims met, set up joint security operation to monitor every new entrance into their community, and they have maintained their sanity up to the moment. 
So that is the kind of partnership that is required. You know, for well, us allow, to defeat Allow me come in here, uh, uh, Mr. Minister. The, the issue of all of this, I think, looks like we're getting a headway because some people have been asking uh, these questions. If we believe, just the way you've highlighted, that some of these people actually came into being uh, through some political uh, affiliations, setting up some of these bodies. Uh, by now, is it impossible for government to have uncovered who actually set these groups up? A lot of things have so, been yes, done. So that we can now say, if Suleiman was the one who set up uh, uh, maybe Boko Haram... I, 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 I don't want to make a proclamation. No, no, we're not, no, we're not, me we're not mentioning names, but yes. isn't the government aware that, okay, now that we know that these were actually groups sponsored we or used are, by some so politicians... The origin of the Boko Haram is well known to many Nigerians. And some of those people uh, have been uh, detained and questioned by the police. Investigations are ongoing. So, um, like I said, it, it's no good to make a proclamation on TV, but uh, a lot of work is going in that direction. Then about the, sorry, Mark, well, about the toll-free lines uh, I did mention, uh, well, mm -hmm. Nigerians are saying that you haven't told them if we have a universal line. It's not about the networks now, maybe yeah. all the network providers, the JSM companies or the NCC, the one that the country has, especially well, maybe from the information the, minister, we can now say, call 111. Everyone, it's a uniform number that we all can call. If we don't have that so that we know if we're likely to get that in the new year, because this truly will help everyone. Like, for instance, in Lagos now, a couple no of times we've seen, we've seen accidents on the road and everyone will just be calling 767. Sometimes when you call, they will tell you, ah, Someone has already called, or is it the same accident and so at so point? So we can have something like that. We will. Um, and, 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 and there are, uh, both with the police, with the SSA, there are lines. Uh, maybe what we need is to advertise those lines more to Nigerians, take up newspaper pages to talk to them on radio and so on.